Welcome to our school report. All the latest news and groundbreaking stories. On the 20th of February 2016, one of the worst cyclones ever recorded in the southern hemisphere hit the islands of Fiji. Cyclone Winston destroyed parts of the country, killing many, destroying villages and displacing over 45,000 people. In the eye of the storm was a student from our school called George. George left Challenger's last year to embark on a gap year of volunteer work and travel. He was in Fiji teaching school children and living with a local Fijian family. And then the storm hit. Uh, just the most enormous noise, the most colossal, enormous noise of wind, of um, you know trees hitting like debris flying through the air, hitting buildings. We had windows smashing in, so glass was spraying everywhere. It was the most enormous noise, and it lasted for hours and hours and hours, and something that I've never experienced before. And because the the hurricane was taking seawater off into the sky and was blowing it across such a, such a gale, like if you opened your eyes, you just get sort of seawater in your eyes. Trees, um, uh, debris, corrugated iron flying through the air at about 200 miles an hour. So that's what, I mean, it's difficult to describe, but that was what it was like when the hurricane hit. And it was just, just the most intense experience of my life, definitely. Okay, so being in the eye of the storm is actually um, quite a, a violent experience. Um, the wind speeds are exceptionally high, so you'll see things being completely blown away, depending on where you are. So we knew a hurricane was due to come, and um, it, it was due to go past us um, quite a few hundred kilometres west yeah. or something, I'm not quite sure, and uh, overnight it turned direction, and unfortunately we were in the eye of the storm, and we had about three or four hours to uh, get ready for the biggest cyclone in the southern hemisphere. I'm assuming that the construction of the buildings was quite poor. Uh, you may have had corrugated iron roofs, you may have had uh, weak foundations. And so even a, a moderate wind speed of 75 miles an hour would have easily blown away some of these buildings. Yeah, so we walked out of the house the next day and it was something out of a post-apocalyptic film. left no trees were in the, like the no trees left standing all the houses were down um there were no birds in the air there was there were bats flying around in the middle of the day because the bats were trying to find places to stay but they had no they had no, no habitat anymore and um there were so many dead animals and it was it was pretty awful what did you do in the aftermath of the cyclone um apply first day um i had not the biggest medical bag going but it was a case of apply first day for those people who'd been injured um, some injuries I'd never seen before, but I tried my best. Mm -hmm. So did the other girls and the boys. We all tried our best to use our knowledge about first aid and make sure people's injuries weren't life-threatening and were okay. How did the uh, Fijians react after the hurricane, had, uh, the cyclone had passed? You know, they had the most incredible, inspirational, motiva motivational reaction. I mean, it was they lost everything. They had nothing left. All the houses were gone. They had no possessions, but still they were happy. My mum, my, the mum I was living with, the family I was living with, she was laughing about it somehow, she was smiling. Um, and it was just, just then, just doing the, what the best you could, you know. So right now we've got 45,000, 45,000 um, Fijians displaced. Um, the death toll's still rising. There's still people missing. And unfortunately, the, the world reaction hasn't been as, as good as it should have been. This is the second strongest cyclone in human history. Unfortunately, it's very cliche to say you've been changed by events like this, but it can be more true that I've got like a new heightened perspective on what's real and what's important in the world. And this, like when I lost all my possessions, I've got like nothing left apart from a few change of clothes. Um, I didn't care, like it doesn't bother me because a year ago that would have really affected me, but now it doesn't matter anymore because on, um, on just what, what's important. And, um, and, and I think that's definitely going to stay with me for the rest of my life. In other news from Chandler's, pupils and staff were saddened to hear that the head of our school, 
Dr Fenton will be leaving the school at the end of this academic year. Student journalists Sam and Tim interviewed Dr Fenton about his time at the school. So when you look back at your time at Challenge, what moments stand out for you the best? Well I think one of the highlights would be in 2013 when we opened our new sixth form centre and um, Prince Edward and the Earl of Wessex came along to open it and I was fortunate enough to spend the day with him, showing him the school and it was a culmination of a lot of hard work, planning, effort, fundraising um, and, and a real team effort by the school and I felt incredibly proud that I had the opportunity to show Prince Edward around uh, and be at the centre of that day so that stands out as, as one of the particular highlights I, I bring, bring to mind. I really enjoy the daily routine of the school so it doesn't have to be a highlight it just you know walking around the school at lunchtime I, I really enjoy just chatting to people getting a feel of what's going on uh, and that, that buzz I mentioned at, at the start which is one of the reasons I went into teaching I still feel that every day and I try not to be cut off in my office all the time which I usually could be because of the pile of uh, jobs there is there are to be done um, but actually getting that buzz around the school is something I still really really enjoy. What will you take away with you from your time at Dr Chaloners? Well, I'm not taking the furniture with me, um, or any of the students. Uh, I'll take away lots of happy memories um, of things that we've done together here. Uh, a lot of friends I've made, members of staff, um, parents, former students who I'll still stay in touch with. So I'll be, I'll be up in Birmingham, but I won't be, uh, I won't be sort of too far away, and I'll, I will be from a distance, uh, keeping a very uh, uh, good eye on what's going on in the school and, and wishing uh, everybody here all, all the very best for the future. But my heart will still be here forever uh, and it's been a very important part of my life which I thoroughly enjoyed. On a happier note, next year the current Deputy Head, Mr Atkinson, has been appointed as Dr Fenton's successor. We asked Dr Fenton if he had any words of advice for Mr Atkinson. Well I think he'll do a great job, I'll say that. Um, uh, if I had words of advice, he doesn't really need my advice I should add, but if I had a word of advice I'd probably to say don't forget that the students are the most important part of the school and it's sometimes easy to, to overlook that when you've got so many other pressures as, as a head teacher and to, to get out there as I know he will and keep connected with the students and, um, and, and, and keep understanding what, what you guys need and want out of your, your education. And also that you know, there are always some hard moments in being a head, <clears throat> some difficulties, it's an up and down kind of a job and that when things are feeling particularly low and particularly challenging I would just remind him that there's always a good time just around the corner. And in more good news for Dr Chandler's, a series of remarkable wins. A team of sick formers won the Young Enterprise Best Product Award for their creation, the 100% book. Three Year 11 successfully won the National Apps for Good competition and they have been busy developing Booked, their app for promoting reading in teens. So Booked app is an app aimed at teenagers that aims to promote reading in teenagers by giving them a more personalised recommendation from people they trust. So through the app they can create book clubs with their friends and their friends and them can then show each other what they've been reading and favourite books and there's brief descriptions of the books. So it's just a, a new way for teenagers to find new books to read. We came up with the, the ideas and the designs and then because we won it was made by a professional company. So uh, we felt really ecstatic because kind of the whole build up to this final event where we'd found out so we all uh, heard it into a room with a big stage out front and they slowly went through all the categories announcing all the winners and when, when it came to our category and we heard we were the winners it was such an amazing moment because all our hard, hard work had finally paid off and we could see the final product. And finally, a moment of glory for the Dr Chandlers. The under-15 rugby team won their way to the national final of the 2016 NatWest Bars competition. The whole school will be present at Twickenham Stadium to watch this momentous occasion. Uh, well, it's fantastic to uh, have the sort of tight-knit community that we've got, and it's a real once-in-a-generation experience for the whole school. And just the feelings that we go through as a squad, uh, it's really emotional, and to get to this, this point in the competition really means a lot to us. What has the competition been like in terms of other schools? Well, there's been lots of other schools involved. There's been over 500, and we've, we've uh, had a lot of challenges from there are many schools across the country, some in Wiltshire, some in, we played Manchester Grammar School, so it's been a very tough, intense competition. On behalf of everyone here at Challenge, we really do wish you the greatest luck in your National Cup Finals next Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for watching Dr. Challoner's School Report.